Hello and welcome to episode 58 of the Your Next Chapter podcast. This is Angela Raspis. Now as I'm sitting here this afternoon in my little recording studio in the back of my home, I'm feeling really, really grateful and that's because I've been getting emails and reviews about the podcast and quite often podcasts can feel quite isolating even though it's all to do obviously with having those wonderful wholehearted conversations with my guests that I enjoy so much. A lot of the behind the scenes work that goes on is very much by yourself and so when you actually receive emails or when I'm actually receiving emails and the reviews that come through iTunes of women letting me know how uplifting and inspiring to use the words of the Remembrance Project from the Netherlands is just so fabulous to hear. It really lifts me up and makes my day. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I'd like to share a couple of the reviews and give a bit of a shout out and a thank you. Uh, there is a Tanya Toot Sweet from Australia, from my home, who said just recently, I can't remember how I found this podcast, but I'm so glad I did. I'm currently trying to figure out what my next chapter business will be, and this podcast is a niche that I've yet to see anywhere else. Women who've already had a chapter or chapters and want to figure out what possibilities are out there for the next phase. Angela has a kind voice, like a warm hug, but with a much needed motiva motivational kick in the pants attached to it. <laughs> I love that combination. Thank you so much, Tanya. And another one from Diane Diaz in America. I just started listening to Angela's podcast and I love it. She does a great job of tying mindset issues to business goals and objectives and making it all relevant for those of us in our next chapter. And since I'm 50 and have gone through many reinventions of myself, I can totally relate to the overall topic of your next chapter. I love it. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Diane. So it's just getting those little snippets of feedback. I mean, you know what it's like yourself in your own business and life. When there's that feeling of appreciation, it just ups the ante in your own levels of motivation. I get a lot of personal satisfaction from the conversations that I have, but hey, who doesn't enjoy a pat on the back? So I'd love to ask you a favor, if I may, if you're also enjoying the podcast, if it's opening your heart and your mind to those infinite possibilities that are out there for your own next chapter, and if you're enjoying the business insights that might be triggering your own ideas on business growth as well, there's three different things that you could do to help me. Now, the first one is to subscribe to the podcast if you're not already subscribed. There's that fancy pantsy um, algorithm that iTunes use. And the more subscribers that are involved with the podcast, the more likely it is to be found when people are searching. So the way that you subscribe, you can simply go onto my website and you'll hover down with the drop down menu under where it says podcast and it'll take you through to iTunes and you click the subscribe button. There's also an image there that shows you where you can subscribe on a podcast app, which you may have on your iPhone or your smartphone. You could also choose to take a moment to leave a review in iTunes. Again, on my website under the podcast drop down, there's some simple instructions on how you can do that. And those reviews obviously also help the iTunes algorithm. If people are appreciating that this is a worthwhile podcast, then more people get the chance to see it. And the third and final thing you could do for me is you could tell a friend. I'm really focusing on this podcast being in a little bit of a league of its own by, by the reference that it is, as far as I can see, the only one that is really focusing in, focusing in on our niche, us women in our 40s and beyond who want to expand more in our businesses and in our lives now that we're in this exciting new chapters that are there for us. So those are three wee things that you could do if you'd like to help me make this podcast bigger, better, brighter and reaching more women. So thank you for that. And let's, uh, now let's talk about this week's show. Now my guest today is Shelley Warren and she has a classic Next Chapter experience where she's making a really considered leap from the corporate world into her own business. Now, Shelley had 25 years of experience in Procter Gamble, leading technical teams and teaching leadership skills and really delivering multi-million dollar projects, introducing a leadership college, all types of things. But she started to feel that this wasn't what she wanted to do any longer. And at 52, she organized early, early retirement and started her own business. Now, Shelley's the woman behind the brand She Connects. And that's a really top-notch women's group that's based in Canada, where women come together to gain their skills, share ideas, make connections, and collaborate, because we do that so well. 
to help those women reach their career and their business goals. Your Shelly helps you not only look at different ways of changing the work that you're doing, but also ways in which you can move into the business that you want to create. And she teaches women how to be memorable, to build their brands both on and offline, so that you can get those promotions or create those collaborations, attract those customers and all those type of things. So Shelley and I had this conversation about how she set herself up for the move out of corporate and into her own business and was very, very open about how as she grew She Connects, she got really clear on what was working and what wasn't and then being brave enough to make the changes that she needed to to make her business expand. And even something as bold as having an enormous Facebook group, a private Facebook group that she created, but then recognizing that that membership was no longer aligned with where she was taking her business. So making the decision to close it down and start again. A really big call, which a lot of people didn't understand, but she knew that it was vital to have alignment with where she was going and what she was providing. So Shelley shares lots of insights into many of those changes that she made. She's an extraordinarily motivating woman, and I know that you'll get a lot out of this podcast, out of this conversation, so that you can also evaluate where you are, where you want to be, and the changes that you need to make. That could mean you've got to use a bit of extra courage, a little extra of that boldness that Shelley talks about to transform your next chapter business. So I'd love to hear your feedback about this particular episode. I know you're going to enjoy it. Inspiration, clarity, confidence, and wholehearted business strategy. Welcome to Your Next Chapter, the podcast especially for women in their 40s and beyond who know that business and personal development go hand in hand. Tune in each week for marketing, mindset, and personal growth strategies along with inspiring stories from women around the world who are creating new businesses and lives that are personally fulfilling and financially rewarding. If you're looking to create a business and life you love, you're in great company. Let's find out what will unfold in your next chapter. I'm your host, Angela Raspis, and I'm so delighted that you're here. Angela, my next chapter began a few years before I retired from my corporate job. I had had a fabulous career and I suddenly was finding myself resenting my work and resenting the fact that I was no longer able to go and do the the lovely work that I was doing in the community. I actually had to go to work. So how I describe this is I tell people that I loved my job until I didn't. So then it became a focus of how can I take the work that I was doing in my community in a volunteer hobby basis and morph that in to a small business that would enable me to leap out of my corporate job and move off into a whole new realm where I could really thrive. I love that idea of being aware of what you were doing on the side, so to speak. That volunteer role was really the thing that was speaking to you and you were enjoying the most. And having that that pre-planning phase, it's like, I loved my job until I didn't any longer. And then you realized you wanted to go off into this new direction. That sounds very familiar to me. So, so tell us, how did it blossom from there? Because having that idea of, I'm, I'm in a volunteer capacity. I'm doing this type of work over here, but now I need it to become my business. I want it to become my business. That sounds like quite a significant transition. It was a significant transition. And so two years before I actually took an early retirement opportunity, I worked really hard to continue to build my working relationships that I had. I already started building my email list I really started creating a sense of community within my own local community and a brand. And I was able to launch that over into a full-time business because it had essentially became who I was. It, It had really morphed into my own identity. And so when the opportunity came for me to take an early retirement, um, package at my corporate job, I prayed, (laughs) I I manifested it. I started, I really started acting as if it really was going to happen. I was closing out projects. I was giving away trinkets on my desk. I was telling everybody that I was going to be able to take this opportunity to go. And so many people thought I had lost my mind. 
because at the time I was 52 and I, like I said, I'd had a fabulous career and I traveled the globe for the company. I was really able to leave my stamp and I really loved what I was doing. But I started to realize that I loved what I was doing in my small hobby more. And so when that becomes your passion and that really becomes the drive where I was wanting to get out of work so that I could um, get out in the evenings and do the, the uh, mentoring and the networking and the business building that I was doing in my community. And I was, you know, people would joke about, oh, you're never home. You know, my gosh, you're never home. And it's true because I was focused on building up that She Connects brand so that when I did leave my Procter & Gamble extended career, that I would have a brand new identity or at least the makings of a brand new identity. So was there, do you see that there was parallels? Were there strengths that you could bring from the Procter & Gamble um, experience that were useful as you moved across into building the She Connects? I mean, I think we often um, need to, and I'm sure this is something that you're very familiar with, is, is recognizing and playing to our strengths. So what was the transfer from one experience to the next? Where Because quite often people have... I think they, they, they don't notice or value perhaps some of the skills that they have and how they can be utilized in other areas. So was there a transfer for you? Absolutely. So the transfer for me were things like my ability to be memorable, both online and in person. I've always had a way of making sure that I made an impact. So always looking to add value. So whether the value was in a project meeting, a brainstorming session or meeting someone at the airport, you know, to tour them in the community for the week. I always made sure that I was adding value for them and making sure that the experience was a lovely one. And those skills that I had in my corporate career really helped me escalate my career as, you know, over the years and, you know, provide me with a lot of really cool opportunities. And that was one of the skills that I used within building my brand. The other skills that were easily transferable were my leadership skills project management skills and event planning, as well as teaching. I taught a lot for the company and alongside a lot of project management. And it's those skills that I find help me create the in-person events that I host within my brand now. And those are the, the skills that are helping me connect with so many women worldwide online through the, um, the groups that I'm involved in and through the podcasts that I listen to and in the wealth of amazing women that are out there in the world that really inspire me every day. That's wonderful to hear. And it sounds as though you have very great levels of, of, aware, of self-awareness of what those skill sets are. And there's a definite, you know, strength of confidence and self-belief that's, that's running, you know, underpinning what you're doing now. Now, was it, did you, go and do a strengths finder or any of those sort of things to really pin down what your strengths were? Or was that more of a, you know, a growing realization or did you do some sort of self audit? I'm really curious because just coming back to the point I was making before, I, I feel that a lot of women who are standing on this edge, ready to desiring, wanting to move in a new direction, but undervaluing what they've actually got from their previous chapters. Well, you know, it's funny, Angela, because I hate, was a huge fan of strength finders and I used it er, like as soon as the, I was a really early adopter of that book when it came out and I, I just really embraced the teachings that were in it for sure. But you know, the, the funny part of with my story is that when I left Procter and Gamble, I, it took me almost a year and a half to even own the fact that I was a former Procter and Gamble leader. I had this conviction <laughs> that I was going to leave that behind and go out and create a whole new brand called She Connects, and I would never have to lean on anything <laughs> that I had done within my P&G career. And lo and behold, what ended up happening was people who were hiring me and people who wanted to work with me, what was attracting them was the fact that I had this really long career with P&G that was multifaceted. And that was enabling me to help create more credibility and more momentum within my business. But I really resisted that at first. And I was working with my business coach and she nailed me on it one day. And she just said, you know, 
your website says nothing about the fact that you spent 25 years in technical teams of Procter & Gamble. Why are you not owning that? <laughs> and I just stop and think about it for a minute and think, you know, I'm just so, I'm independent to a fault and I can be quite stubborn at times. And that was the point where I was really being stubborn with, I really had this dream that I was going to create this, you know, whole new identity and whole new brand without having to lean on my corporate experience and then when I finally leaned into it and realized that as, you know, as a matter of fact, it's the skills that I learned and the experiences that I had over those 25 years that are helping me and really who I am now. So why not embrace it? That is so important. I'm so delighted to hear that because I know with my own experience, like I've been in marketing forever in sales and communication and, and events forever since I was 16, 17 years old. But when I actually decided to close my marketing agency, this is back at the end of 2012, I wanted to wipe the slate clean. You know, I was throwing mm -hmm. the baby out with the bathwater. I never wanted to look at another or write another strategic marketing plan, you know, as long as we shall live. And mm -hmm. I really did the pendulum swung very far away from that and I really got into the into the self-worth the self-belief the confidence side of things because I saw that as just so so important and I'd really gone through a personal transformation myself and being in the recovery movement and, and really changing myself but much like you I recognize that so many of the skills that I have in terms of you know business strategy I couldn't and I shouldn't go and hide them under the couch so to speak or hide them under the sofa because they just as you articulated so beautifully they underpin the credibility like mm -hmm. because I've had many many years of experience in those areas why would I not you know, incorporate that into my new business but in the way that serves me and makes me feel good because that's so important but then also serves my clients so it sounds like both you and I had that realization that <laughs> it doesn't have to be this or that it can be this and that and I think that's Absolutely. a really important but for people to realize. So the strengths finder, that's the, we are talking about the same one there with the Marcus Buckingham. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll well, make sure I pop a link in here because for anyone that is, you know, just starting out and perhaps doesn't have that clarity, sometimes it's hard for us to turn the spotlight on ourselves and go, well, I'm good at this and I'm damn great at that. So perhaps that's a little bit of a, of a system that can help you shine that light. If you're feeling a little bit bashful about how brilliant you actually are. And it can also, so let's talk about what, Oh, yeah. Sorry, it can, it can also validate, you know, all along you think that, you know, I, I, I find these things quite easy or these things come easy to me or um, people are often mm. coming and asking me about these specific things. Once you go through that strength finder, which really only takes a half an hour to go through the book itself is, is quite a tiny book. But when you do the actual assessment, it takes about a half an hour and then it gives you an unbelievable report with your top five strengths and you'll be amazed <laughs> at how accurate it is. Yeah. I remember taking it and, and it was like, oh my God, he's in the room. He's watching me. What's going mm -hmm. on here? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll make sure we've got the links there in the episode on the show notes on your podcast page, which will be angelaraspis.com forward slash five, eight 58 for this episode so that you can find your way to the strengths finder. So here we are one and a half years um, after you've started or, or really started to transform she connects you're really owning your former experience tell us about the brand building journey from when you took this from a because i understand the she connects brand was more like a voluntary type community service scenario into a, a booming brand for you today so, so talk us through the steps that you took there well she connects actually was started about five years ago in another community near me by a group of young women who had returned from university back into their hometown and had wanted to join their local women's groups and were not feeling welcomed. So they decided we're going to start our own. And so that's how she connect started. They had heard of me. I went down to help them facilitate um, some of their workshops, fell in love with the founder, and her and I worked closely together for two years as she built that brand until it came a point where, you know, it was funny. The day I went to offer to buy it from her is the day she begged me to buy it from her. So we ended up, I ended up buying it and then totally shutting down everything that went with it and rebranded the entire thing and turned it into what it is right now. So it was interesting to That's go. That's interesting. There was a bit of a theory. 
it was really interesting and her and I are still very close and she was just moving off into a different direction and I wanted to take the brand. I saw the potential in what I could do with it if I could have it and morph it into what I really, the uh, avenue that I really wanted to move it into. And so the very first thing I did was hung my shingle up as a coach and started getting clients. And then the next thing I did, like this was like within two months, I hosted my very first monthly She Can Act success series. And the intent of those success series was I wanted to offer an alternative to the normal or usual monthly networking event that would happen in your community. And so what I launched was a live interview that took place during a cocktail hour in front of a live audience where I weave in the conversation that comes up through the audience and I morph that into a live interview with a fabulous woman who is not from our community. Because what I found was that small business owners and career women really do get the concept of wanting to expand their reach. They see the value in expanding their reach. The issue is they don't often have the confidence to do so. So I decided I would serve up the space for them and serve up fabulous women for them to connect to from other cities close by, thereby helping them grow their own networks and be able through role modeling, teach them how to network and how to put themselves out there with confidence and how to meet new people and make new connections and expand their reach. I love the sound of that. So instead of having like a prescriptive event where there's a speaker talking about a specific topic, what you're doing is responding to the need in the room. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so in advance, mm -hmm. I know who the um, fabulous woman that I'm going to feature and I bring her in and I conduct a live interview up on uh, two high chairs while everyone else is having, enjoying a meal and a cocktail. And, and, you know, I love those events because for many of those women, it's the one night a month that they get out. Yeah. And so they're just really looking forward to it. And for, for most of them, it's, it's a must attend event because I bring in a wide variety of women. So I have everyone from presidents and CEOs to musicians, to artists, to women who are launching businesses from their kitchen table to mompreneurs who are, you know, ecstatic about finally getting an empty spare bedroom to be able to turn into a, <laughs> into an office. I mean, these women, they're a broad group of women, but they're all amazing. They're all having an impact and I just love to shine the light on them. And I love to hear the backstory about their journey to success because the one common denominator through all the women that I've interviewed over the last two years is that nobody's career has been a straight shot. Everyone has weaved and ebbed and flowed and fall down and gotten back up and pivoted and spun around and that's where they ended up where they are and all of them realized that all of those movements have really led them to where they are today I think that's a vital thing for people to hear and to really allow that to land. I saw, a, um, and you've probably seen it as well, it was on Facebook, that wonderful little image that shows what people think success looks like. Mm -hmm. And there's that you know, beautiful straight line going ka -ching from, the, mm -hmm. from the starting point up to the top right. And then right alongside it is what it really looks like, which looks like an incredibly tangled mess of, you know, the cats got into the wool, so to speak, and tied it all up. And, and you're right, I, I like to use the expression with the benefit of kind sight. I can see all the places which I perhaps initially thought were frustrating or they'd failed or they were dead ends or cul-de-sacs or you know being taken off course have actually contributed every one of those pieces have contributed yes there may have been some frustration along the way but when you actually do look back you recognize that we are this this culmination of all of our experiences and to me that's very much what a next chapter is it's that diversity of the of the the recipe now because we've had so many experience to put into that melting pot as ingredients and it sounds as though that's what you're experiencing with the women that you're working with as well it's so true and by hosting those monthly events they were always held they still are always held on the last Tuesday of the month everyone knows that there's going to be an event that night they may not have heard or know too much about the woman that's being featured 
but they want to be there to learn about her and learn about themselves along the way. And so as I was hosting those events these last two years, what it provided me was a, my own platform to create brand awareness for what I stand for, what my skill set is, and what my goals are with my business. So then on year two, I decided that I was going to teach. So one month I do an interview, the next month I teach, then an interview, and then I teach. And so the concepts that I teach, it's, it's like an open group coaching session where I provide worksheets. There's a particular topic. They know what the topic is going to be in advance. And the topic is generally linked to entrepreneurship, um, both in the online world and the in-person world. And so women come together to flush out their concerns or their, where they're stuck and everyone gets an opportunity to talk about their business. It's, you know, it really showcases who they are and what they're trying to do. And it's amazing the growth that I've seen, the, in, like the individual growth I've seen in these women that come. And the other thing that is so delightful is I get to watch these women come and gain clients from those nights. And I've had many of those women say to me, Shelly, I, I mean, I need to start adding up the revenues that I've been able to benefit from coming to your events. And so that that, that's another benefit of creating your own platform and doing it in person. Because I know on the, in the on, 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 online world, everyone thinks it's all happening online. And there's a lot that's happening online. But there's a lot that you can create and make happen in your own communities. I think that's another really important point for us to, to bring home because I know when I, when I swapped to this business and I got a little too enamored by the online world for a while, that everything had to happen online. But I know as an individual that I get so much energy and so much enjoyment out of the face-to-face -face connection. And I think um, when I think about all the women who are sitting in their wee home offices or their little podcast studios like this one, mm -hmm. or they've you know, stolen a, a quarter of the, the dining room table or whatever the case may be but we're working in isolation which is very different from when we were in those corporate environments or in those small business environments where we were employed in the past I mean a lot of us uh, when we're moving into next chapter businesses there is usually we've been in corporate in some way we've had some sort of a break we've brought our businesses online but we miss that face-to-face -face connection so it sounds like your women are really responding to that energy and that vibrancy that's in the room and so am I. I yeah. tell people that those evenings feed my soul. Yeah, perfect. And they, I look forward to everyone. I'm ecstatic about curating this list of women that I showcase. And I get really excited about the opportunity to teach as well because in all essence, I, am, I love to teach. And it just... It feeds my soul, it feeds their soul, and it also creates this vibrancy amongst business women in communities and even the nearby communities because nearby communities, the women drive in and, and come to these events. So everyone's having the opportunity to expand their reach, meet new biz BFFs, and learn and grow all at the same time in, a, in an atmosphere that's very welcoming and very safe. I think it's important to note here because I know that um, I've had similar, similar conversations in the past where people have felt that, well, the market where I am, the physical geographic market is already saturated. There's so many networking groups, there's so many events, there's so many this and that. What's the point in trying to create another one? But I think what we're talking about here, which is true of, of everything in business, it's your angle, it's your unique style, your signature style, as I believe you'd refer to it as, which let's expand on in a moment. But it's always a case of you don't need to try and be all things to all people. I think we sometimes get into this um, bit of a spiral of I've got to create this enormous thing, this, this you know, ginormous list, this, this expansive business because there's so much competition and I've got to go and grab this big chunk of it. But that's not actually true. If you actually looked at things a little closer, if you looked at one of the things that I talk about with clients is 
on the financial side what are your financial imperatives what do you actually want and need to earn and i like to try effector goals what is the acceptable what's the stretch what's the unicorn sort of levels and if you get real about that and the service that you've got so often you can find in my experience that within quite a small radius of where you are you could build up a geographic footprint as you have and create a very hearty business. I'm not saying turn off the online world at all, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is that we can sometimes overestimate how important it is for us to, to build worldwide as opposed to just down the road. What, how do you feel about that? It's so true. That's been the bedrock of, of SheConnex. Mm. And the name, just the name itself of the brand compels me to mm -hmm. get out in my community and meet people face to face. And, and that includes when I host strategy sessions, when I host VIP days, if I'm hosting live masterminds, or if I'm hosting any of my in-person all day events that I host, the whole premise of those is to walk my talk. I mean, I can definitely connect with people on a computer or on a zoom call or on a telephone for sure. But I connect so much better and I'm so much more comfortable face to face. And I know that about myself and I enjoy it. I really get excited about knowing that I'm going to meet a client and we're going to do an hour and a half strategy session and we're just going to use my big ass sticky notes and get them all up all over the wall and we're going to punch it out and make it all happen. I mean, I get just as much out of those strategy sessions as my clients do. And then that helps build the whole relationship that we have. And that's where I'm able to get referrals. And that's where I'm getting my audience for any of my events. And the, the, the train just keeps moving and moving along. You sound, this is why we connected so so quickly. You sound so much like me. I, I very much the same. I run masterminds, strategy sessions, et cetera, et cetera. And I can do them on Zoom happily, but there's nothing quite as nice as, as bringing someone out onto, we have a big deck here with a lovely view and, and I work at the big table out on the deck and it's just gorgeous. I love it. That, that energy, it, it lights me up in the same way. So I'm with you, mm -hmm. but let, let's, let's then talk about the actual growth of the business. I know, and I mentioned to you uh, before we started talking, you know, inverted is formally that I've been surveying um, the women who are in my community lately to get this feeling of what are the things that you want to know and without a doubt you know first and foremost which is the whole purpose of the next chapter podcast is inspiring possibility so it's hearing from someone like yourself who has made that transition they've made that move they've become aware of what it is that they enjoy they've given themselves permission to actually start to create a business that lights them up obviously there needs to be a need in the market that you're connecting with but it has to be that you create the business in the way that has that energy and excitement, which comes across so clearly when I'm talking to you. But then we've got the nuts and bolts. They're really keen to know, you know how do you generate leads and, and specifically build your list, your community, whether that be you know, the face-to-face -face or the, the online list. And how are you actually generating you know, cash flow? What are, you, what are the core services that you have? So could you talk to your experience there of, of what it's been like to create that, that list of, of potential um, clients and community and to generate leads and cash flow from there? Sure. Well, the first thing I did was really decided that I was going to put myself out there. So mm. I have been well known in my community. I've been the president of other women's networking groups in my area, definitely known amongst the um, leadership community and the women's networking groups in my community, which was fine, but I knew that I had to expand my reach further. So I started oozing out and moving forward into close and nearby communities, joining those networking groups, and many of them are co-ed and having those people understand who I was. Whether or not I thought my ideal client actually attended these events or were members of these groups, I set that aside because the goal for me was to have the more people that knew about me and knew what I did, then the more chance I had of being top of mind. So when they, they were talking to their neighbor and their neighbor's complaining you know, over a beer, over the picket fence, about how much they hate their job, then I would be top of mind and they would be able to say, you know, you need to talk to Shelly Warren because that's what she does. She helps people find your create dream careers and dream teams. So it was really more about getting out there and educating people that I was no longer Shelly from P and G, but I was Shelly from SheConnects who uses my resources and my experience from P and G 
to help people find or create their dream careers and their dream teams. So that's going to breakfast meetings, luncheon meetings, evening meetings, and getting in the car and sometimes driving an hour and a half from my city to be able to show up and connect with people. And I did a ton of that in the first year. And I still do a fair bit of it now. But what I have done is I've stepped back and I've honed in on the particular groups who I'm starting to see return on investment. So a lot of exploration at first, finding out where those were and then finding out and realizing where are the audience where you've got that resonance and that connection and refining. Yeah, and, from and the biggest thing for me was after 25 years in the corporate world, I was entrenched and very highly connected over there and knew I was connected in my local community, but I knew that wasn't going to be enough. And I didn't know any other way to do it other than old school you know, get out there and eat the rubber chicken dinners. And that's what I did. And I, I made sure that I was memorable, you know, at each networking event and people wanted to talk to me and I wanted to talk to them and then followed up with them. The, the classic networking skill set is what I relied on. And I use that skill set to this day and building my community. I had started to build a private Facebook group and it got to be quite large and quite unmanageable actually, because I was starting to beat myself up because I wasn't feeling like I was serving the women in that group because there was such an eclectic group of women in that group. And in my mastermind group that I had belonged to, my mastermind sisters convinced me to shut that group down, girl. So I did, I popped in on a Tuesday, did a Facebook Live, said on Friday, I'm shutting it down and here's why. And through all the controversy, still went through with that and shut it down and then created a new group called the Encore Career Women. And that group is much smaller. It's much tighter. It is my absolute niche. And I'm able to serve them and come up with ideas in order to serve them at an even higher level that I'm really excited about. But just taking that decision to shut the bigger group down and focus in on a tighter, smaller niche really empowered me. And I, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I lost some sleep over it. And I had peers saying to me, you know, you're crazy. It took you, you know, you've built that group up in a year and a half and you're going to shut it down and go for something smaller. But in my heart of hearts, I knew that it wasn't about the quantity or the, um, you know, number of members that shows up on the Facebook page it was about, am I able to make some deep connections with these women? Big decision, but I mean, you can see again, in hindsight, what a great decision. That, now, that's a great example of the courage that it takes to follow your heart. You know, we often talk about um, follow your passion, follow your heart, and, and you'll never work a day again as long as you live. Well, that's not true. It's just a lot more enjoyable to be doing what we're doing. But to mm -hmm. actually sit there and, and, and to make that decision to close that group and to follow through on it, to me, takes tremendous courage. So I salute you for that one. But you knew where you wanted to go. It was clear to you. You were listening to yourself as to what would work better. What, how could you serve better? How could you, you know, play a, a more impactful role? And having that more niche down audience that you could really serve makes perfect sense. So, yeah, congrats. That was a huge one. Mm -hmm. So at first, that was the decision to put yourself out there, to start moving about, to really become known, to be and following those basic networking rules, which I guess if you bring it down to the crux, it's being interested in others. It's working out how you can assist others, you can connect others, as opposed to tooting your own horn, as we'd say here in Australia. That to me is the most um, basic of networking. I used to, I established and ran a, a women's networking association here in Australia with a good friend of mine as well. So we learned a lot of those really important networking skills. But so now you're in that second year, you're, you've, you're refined down, you're, you're going to particular groups that resonate and have more of what you have as a refined, what I would call most aligned client. What, where did you go from there in, the, in terms of this lead generation and list building? The next thing that I did was I started creating a monthly newsletter and the newsletter was quite lengthy, quite involved. And I had my followers tell me that they saved the newsletter for when they can sit down with a cup of tea and go through it or when the kids are in bed. And I tried to sustain that level of newsletter for well over a year. And then I decided 
you know what, this isn't really working. I'm, they're loving it, but it's not helping me increase my revenues. It's not helping me move my business forward. It's definitely moving indiv the individuals and the, the group forward, but it's not helping me grow my business. So I decided to restructure my whole plan for my newsletters. And now I do them every Friday. And everyone knows that a shorter version of the newsletter lands in their inbox at 7 a.m. on Fridays. And I use it as a teaching platform. So the first part of the newsletter, I'm teaching a concept. There's, and it's either a concept about finding your encore career, whether you're going to follow the employee path or you're going to find the or follow the entrepreneurial path or whether you work in a corporation where you're looking to build up those leadership skills there's a teaching moment in that newsletter and then the rest of the newsletter I use it as a way to showcase any of my events that I have coming up any of the programs that I'm doing with coaching or highlight any of the results that have been happening with my clients and that was a huge shift for me because I'm not comfortable with that I'm more comfortable shining the light on others. It's taking me now year two to realize that my business will not grow to the level that I want it to grow if I, if I don't start shining the light on my own capabilities. That's a big one, isn't it? That feeling of um, putting yourself in the spotlight. Again, using that expression that I said before, that's common in Australia. It's about tooting your own horn. Mm -hmm. So it's actually owning your value, owning the difference and the impact and the contribution you can make and not being afraid to showcase that and to invite people forward. So you, it sounds as though you, as in many of us do, there was an uncomfortability there at first where oh, I've got to actually put myself forward. I know, um, and it's an Australian thing, it may, may exist more overseas as well, but the tall poppy syndrome, mm -hmm. where if you put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm fabulous, someone will drag you down. They'll, you know, what do they say? Hate is going to hate. So mm -hmm. I know people do hold back from actually saying, hey, I'm great at this and I can help you here because of that fear. So what would you say in your experience is a way of, of overcoming that, that feeling that I'm a bit of an imposter, I can't stand up and say I'm great at this? because maybe I'm not what what do you do in those scenarios well what I've learned over the time now is to actually follow my own coaching that I give my clients right so I would give that exact same coaching to my clients who are trying to build up their revenues and what really made it stick for me as I was hosting a live mastermind I have access to a mansion nearby and I use it for a lot of my events because well, I just love it. Who doesn't want to go <laughs> hang out in a mansion? For it sounds day? good. Yeah. <laughs> sounds so very appealing. I was hosting a live mastermind for four brilliant business women from my community, and we were doing work to increase their profits. And so each person had an hour and a half, and we were totally focusing on them and their business and you know, plotting things out as, as to how they're going to increase their revenues. And at the end of the day, I was driving home, and I thought to myself, I need my own, I need my own session. I need someone to come in and teach me how to go through and move my own profits. And what would be the coaching that I share with these women today? I need to embrace and own and give myself permission to follow those same strategies and tactics. And one of the first things that I knew that I needed to do was to start being more vocal about my offerings instead of the polite Canadian soft sell where you think that, well, it's all on my website, so they'll find it there. No, you first have to get them to your website. And then even when they're at your website, you need to compel them to want to stay on the website and, and go and look to see what you have to offer. And that all, all dials back to, do I have the confidence to be able to talk about what I do and what I provide? And my own clients, I found, were the ones that were doing most of the cheerleading on my behalf. And I felt, well, that's, you know, that's not really appropriate. I mean, I love it and everything, but that's not appropriate for them. They shouldn't be carrying that burden. So then I just started to embrace the same tactics and strategies that I used my clients for myself and put myself out there. 
<laughs> it's a biggie and it's what, what actually a suggestion that I that I saw some time ago was a challenge to an individual so a challenge to you and myself and anyone who's listening is to for seven days in a row on social media on whatever platform it is that that you are most um, prolific on the one that you like to embrace what I call your marketing megaphone is to share a testimonial each day just speaking about that client feedback that does actually show how fabulous you are and then on the back end of each of those testimonials Give the invitation. Let's talk about this. And even take that to specific individuals within your community who have shown an interest in the past, but perhaps haven't stepped forward yet. Be bold. You know, as we ask ourselves, what's the worst that could happen? They could say no, but then you're in no different situation than you're in now. So it is, it's actually taking, or I know some people have um, described it as putting on your big girl panties, which isn't an expression <laughs> that I like that much, but the yes. <laughs> The essence of it is you're owning your brilliance, not apologizing for taking up, you know, that right size space. I think um, Brene Brown says it beautifully, you know, don't shrink, don't puff up, you know, stay in your sacred space. And it's just owning who you are and you know the difference that you've made in the lives of the women who are working with you. So if we stay quiet, if we don't talk about what it is that we can help people with, then we actually deny the people that we're here to help that opportunity to, to grow. So I try and anchor myself in that when I'm talking about the way that I can help people, but it, it takes it, you know, it takes a little bit of courage at first, doesn't it? To break through that feeling of, you know what? I, I need to talk about myself and, and, the, and these, um, these impacts on other people more. So true. I really like that idea that you shared with taking the testimonials and sharing one every day on whatever media megaphone you've, you've got working for you. It's a great idea. I'm going to watch you now. I'm going to watch it happen. <laughs> For sure. Hold me accountable. <laughs> okay. So we've, so we, you changed that monthly newsletter. You recognize that that wasn't serving you. You could see that there wasn't that, um, that let's say balance of energy because you give and you receive, there needs to be a giver. There needs to be a receiver. That's you know the balance of the world. So now we've changed it and we're doing this, this weekly you know, sparky newsletter. What other changes do, have you made or what other strategies have you found to be successful for you to build that community and to build that brand? I started hosting day long events, which I like to call feminars. And each of the seminars had a particular topic where I would invite women in, like-minded women to come in and learn a whole new skill set. And the other thing that I really, the added value component of my live seminars that I host is I like to have a vendor component with them. So what I do is I'll decide how big the space is or how I want my layout to be. And I'll decide I may have six to maybe eight spaces for people to come in and actually showcase what it is that they do. And so that afforded me another opportunity to sell a higher price ticket if you wanted a vendor table so that they can come and have their wares set up and their business showcase for the entire day. And then during breaks and lunches and after the seminar, there's an opportunity to connect and gain clients and gain momentum for their business as well. Beautiful. That's, um, that's, that's a wonderful way of actually giving people that opportunity to step out and become more visible themselves. So not only have you embraced the recognition that you need to be more visible, you're giving other people the opportunity to do the same. That's that beautiful give and receive. Yeah. And then the other thing I did was I started doing some freelance work, which initially I had re, um, you know, really tried to not have to get involved in. I had lots of people that would come forward and ask me to do freelance work. And then I decided, you know what, as I'm building my business in, the, in its infancy, in order to have a revenue stream that I could count on and that was still helping me hone my skills even further, taking on some key clients in the corporate world through freelance has really helped me really find my footing and understand that the skill set that I have, it really is valuable in more than one market. So it helped increase my confidence. It helped create even more brand awareness for me. And it helped create that sense of security and a little bit more comfortability as you're trying to build a brand new business. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to hear you say that. These are conversations that happen in my masterminds and with uh, my mentoring clients as well. I like to call that investor clients. I still have a corporate client from my uh, marketing agency days. I let go and, and gifted clients to quite a few other um, 
freelance consultants, but I kept a couple for myself and I do take on projects like that. Mm-hmm. And my feeling is that especially when you are first growing your business, I, to take the blinkers off a little bit in terms of where your revenues may come from. Yeah, we know the why, we know the what, but the how, I believe we need to sort of just let go a little bit as to how things can actually appear. So those investor clients, as I refer to them at, is they're investing in us so that we can do the work that we love. So it take, I think if we put all of the pressure on our fledgling businesses in those first couple of years that this is the only work that I can do, I'm almost betraying my, my purpose if I take stuff on the side. And, and I just don't think that's true. I think you can, without the stress of this business must create, it's like you know, expecting your husband to be able to tick every single box in your life. It's unrealistic. Mm-hmm. So if we take that pressure off our, our primary business by getting a little revenue in from the left or the right, then I think we can flourish more in that primary business because you don't have that, that terrible feeling of, of stress and pressure that you can sometimes put on yourself. And I'm not saying that you were having that feeling of stress and pressure, but you were embracing that side work for a different reason, but it can still have that same impact. Do you think? Oh, I don't know too many entrepreneurs that don't have some yeah. sleepless <laughs> nights for sure. And, you know, for me, leaving a highly lucrative corporate job, to suddenly decide I'm going to go off and start this small business. You can bet there's many sleepless nights. And that's what I find compelling to make you want to buckle down and just really take a look at what is working and what is not, and then be bold and brave enough to make the shift. Because Mm -hmm. oftentimes we hang in where we're feeling comfortable too long for fear of making the pivot and we just end up getting into, into more of a mess and the self-doubt really kicks in and then sometimes it's even harder to get out of. So taking on those freelance clients really makes life interesting and it helps me grow my connections. It helps me get out there into far-reaching communities and it also creates a bit of sense of urgency within my own coaching clients because they know that I do freelance work on the side. They know I have other corporate clients on the side. So when I offer up as of right now, I have a summer sizzler sale on for my success or for my, um, my uh, strategies. They know there's a certain amount of time during the week that I've set aside to do strategy work with clients, but that I have commitments elsewhere. So it does create a a bit of a sense of urgency for those clients that want to take advantage of the summer slowdown period so that they can make some key plans and be able to hit fall and hit the ground running. And that's really important. That genuine sense of urgency and scarcity can move that buying cycle forward. And I Mm -hmm. think that connects back to what you were saying earlier, where we can have these beautiful websites and all our stuff can be up there, but having that just expecting that our clients will take action. It's been my experience quite often that our most likely action is inaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. retaining the status quo and so we do need to be a little more pressing and actually point out those steps take this action take this step click this button make this phone call be a little bit more overt to our audiences which comes back to that confidence piece if we know and and we do that the work that we're doing can have a genuine impact and make a difference to our clients then actually being more overt and requesting or suggesting that they that they accept our invitations becomes easier because I like to see us as a bridge between where our clients are and where they want to be. And we can, you know, take, walk them across that bridge with our help. So yeah, that little bit of urgency because you're a freelancer as well. So your time is very, very valuable. So I need to get you in my diary. And there's, you know, it's funny because when I first started to create She Connects compared to what my idea of what the brand was going to be and what, the outcomes are going to be is very different from what it is now. And even though it's only been two years where it's not a hobby, it's a business now, it's not a hobby. I've been able to look at it and realize, okay, this piece isn't working. I need to let that go. Mm -hmm. That networking group isn't providing me any clients. I need to let that go. I need to go back to my website, streamline it even more, clarify my, my messages even tighter so that when people do come to my website, it's, so obvious. It's so clear as to what I'm doing. 
Whereas I find sometimes people, they build their website or they build their brand, they build their business and they, they're afraid to make any more changes or they're, um, they've just convinced themselves that, nope, this is what my brand is and people will find me. The bright people are going to find me. And part of that is true, but I also have learned in the last two years that you have to go with the ebb and flows of the trends and you have to be able to really morph into this new person that you're becoming. Because I can tell you, I can't believe how much I've grown as an individual. I'm 55. I thought I was pretty much grown up. But in the last two years, I've grown so much more than I ever thought I would have. And it's really about testing, trialing, figuring out what works, figuring out, oh, Jay, is that that didn't work at all. And then being able to shift over and try something new and be okay with it. I've really understood that I don't need to have all of the answers. I just need to have the confidence to keep moving forward and keep trying new things and keep learning from those around me. Uh, it's an evolution, isn't it? It's a constant evolution. And I, I dare say if I came back in another couple of years and, and we revisited this conversation, you'd be saying something similar. I, I thought I was all growing up. <laughs> and, you know, at 57, I thought I'd, I'd learned it all. But you know, if I look back on where I was just two years ago, I've changed direction, I've evolved, you know, I've expanded, I've shifted in this new way. I mean, and I think that's the exciting part to me. It, this is about being an entrepreneur. And I'm not talking about, you know, the startup tech entrepreneurs i'm talking about this wholehearted entrepreneurship in your next chapter where you get to evolve and you get i love the way that you've got that constant evaluation going on you're constantly looking and and feeling into things is this on one hand is this working you know looking at the i guess the the more masculine side of goals, if I can say, but balancing that with also the feminine, which is what feels good, what gives me energy, what, fit, what lights me up, I think is the, um, is the phraseology that you were using before. And so you're on this constant evolution, which is exciting to watch. How does it, how does it feel to be doing the work that you're doing? It's really fulfilling and it's fun. And, and it's really cool to be able to take the skill set that I had in my corporate life which even just what we were talking about in my corporate life, that would have been termed course corrections. And that's exactly what I'm doing in my business. So I'm embracing the idea that what I learned in my corporate life, I can transfer it over into this new business and be able to give myself permission to grow and evolve as a business owner. And like you said, two years from now, <laughs> I will be a more evolved business owner. And that's the cool thing about being your own boss and having your own business that you can, you can share as much as you want to share, right? You can be as, tra as transparent as you want and as authentic as you want. And in my group, I tend to be quite transparent with what, whatever is happening with me and my life and, and my, my business, because I want the women in that group to feel safe and understand that they're not alone, that, even though I'm the leader of that group, I fall down and, you know, skin my knees quite regularly and I can still pick myself up and c come up with a new plan and move forward with it. And that's, that's the kind of leaders that I've always wanted to follow. And the ones that I find really compelling are the ones that are really embracing the whole idea of continual learning and, and knowing that they're not the end all and the be all. <clears throat> excuse me, I completely agree. That continual learning, that's definitely one of my highest values in the way I like to show up in the world. I'm hungry and I love learning and I anticipate to still be going on courses and, and sh how did you describe your event? A, sh a Shemina? Feminars. Feminar. Got it the wrong way around. I got the She Connects mixed up with it. But I still anticipate doing that sort of thing, getting excited about a new book, a new podcast, or by then maybe a new virtual reality episode, even when I'm in my 80s. I never want to stop learning. It's, it's such a vital part. Mm. Well, one of the things, Shelley, as, we, as we're bringing this wholehearted conversation around to a close on this occasion is, is saluting that idea of transparency. I mean, you've shared some beautiful insights here for us today of that, that evolution, that journey that you've been on with the setting yourself up for when you took the exit strategy from the corporate career, but you, you actually took control of that scenario and you knew what it was that you wanted to start moving towards. So you started putting that in place. 
even before you left the corporate world. But then you've from there as you've built and changed She Connects, you've learned every step along the way about what's working, what isn't, what you're enjoying, what people are responding to, and you're responding to those demands. So it's a beautiful thing to watch a business evolve in that way and to know that someone's at that at the helm who, as you said, is okay with change. You're okay with change. And that's going to be the consistent theme of, of what happens in the business. So where can we find you in this big wide world? Because I'm sure there's plenty of women who are listening, especially if they're in Canada, who are listening, who would like to find out more about your way of, of looking at the world and working with people. So where can we find you on the, in the world? You can find me in the world on my website, <laughs> www.sheconnectswithanx.com. You can also find me on Facebook in my Encore Career Women Facebook group. And you can find me on Instagram at I am She Connects. Beautiful. I'll make sure that we put those links on the page as well so that people can click straight through and they can come and find you. So what would you like to leave us with today in terms of that woman who is listening and thinking, can I, can I, can I make this leap? Can I move away from my corporate role or can I move my business in a new direction? Because it's not quite feeling or, or working the way that I initially wanted it to. What would you leave us with, with those thoughts for people who are in those scenarios? The biggest thing I would tell you to do is if you're not sleeping well at night because you're not feeling fulfilled or you're waking up in the morning dreading getting out of bed or having to give yourself a pep talk in the car on the way to work, those are signs that you're meant to be doing something else. And getting over the, the good girl voice in your head that's telling you that you should be quite happy with the role and the career that you have and that you shouldn't be desiring anything else is another sign that <laughs> you are destined for something else. And it's, you know, it, careers can happen at any stage of your age. I've worked with people that are in their twenties and are coming out of university with massive university debt and piles of guilt about their parents who had big dreams for them in this career. And yet they are literally dragging their butts into work each day, hating every minute of it. And they're so fearful to go and make a career switch at 25 and 26 and helping them work through that. So would you want to make that change at 25 or 26? Or are you going to stick it out and wait till you're 55? Really important. So what we're saying here is that an encore career can be switched on at any stage of life. If you're feeling those signs, if you're feeling that, that you're needing to give yourself that pep talk and just get on with it, you don't have to. You can start exploring new options today, right now. And perhaps we start with that link through to the Strengths Finders to, to understand where those strengths are. But listening to your heart, looking at the things that you're doing other than your job as well, as you did, Shelley, when you were doing the work with She Connects and really realizing that that was pulling you in a new direction and opening up to that. So I hope that someone listening right now, yep, that's you, that you're going to have that courage to start exploring what your encore career, what your next chapter could look like. Shelley, thank you so much for your time with us today. I've really enjoyed the conversation and I hope that you have as well. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, make sure that you visit the page. That's AngelaRaspis.com forward slash 50. Oh, my goodness, 58, I think was the one that we've got to now, where you'll be able to access all those links to be able to get involved with Shelley's world, going and visiting her website, seeing her on Instagram, looking at that Facebook community group, if it sounds as though that's a good fit for you. But most importantly, with a piece of information that was shared today, if an insight really sparked an idea within you, I encourage you to take action on that idea because as we've discussed today that encore career that next chapter it's waiting for you to step into it and both Shelly and I and so many other women who are a part of my community will be applauding you as you get that courage and take that next step into something that could be so much more fulfilling and give you that happiness that you're seeking so thanks for spending your time here with us today and I will talk to you again soon have a lovely day
thanks for listening to the Your Next Chapter podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please let me know. Pop over to AngelaRaspers.com to subscribe to the show and leave a review. And whilst you're there, you can also enjoy valuable free resources, including show notes and downloads, along with the Next Chapter community, where you can connect with other wholehearted women on the same journey as you. We'd love to welcome and support you as your next chapter unfolds. See you next time.